Hey folks, Captain Dan here. Welcome to our new YouTube channel from the Kaiju Table. On this day, November 19th, 2021, leaving Barnegat Inlet. I'm gonna head north right to Seaside Heights, work off the wheel and head north from there. There's a good striper bite going on. Not really marking any bait, not seeing any birds. You can see right here we're off of Seaside Heights, heading north. We decided to go with our shad spread white shads, green shads. We're gonna set up about a three, sometimes a four line spread, otherwise working the shads and a couple of nomad rigs. I'm gonna show you that on another episode how we rig our nomads. So here we're rig uh, rigging white nomads. White seem to be the color of the month for us. Uh, white spoons, white shads, white uh, eels. Here's Jack. Manning the uh, helm, heading north, we're on autopilot, thank god for autopilot, lets the crew work the fish while the boat works the course. Um, not a lot of boats on this day, it's a Friday, not too crowded, but right away we get into fish and unfortunately we have a malfunction, we're working our rod and uh, you can't tell, Jack is reeling that thing like he's winding up a clock. The reel separated from the frame, only to be fixed a few hours later for the following like weekend. Going, Just a couple of screws popped out of the uh, the reel that attaches it to the frame, but he got the fish in. We had to put him in neutral. There was just way too much force for him to reel it in that way. Um, he does land this fish. We actually land two keepers that day. We scored about 10 fish all together. Yeah, the rest of them were all overs, but everything hit the white shads. Um, again, not marking any bait. These were all like kind of ghost fish that came out of nowhere for us. And here's Jack landing our first keeper of the day. Um, nice 32-inch fish, very healthy. You're going to see uh, Chef Michael Smith have a fabulous dinner, make a fabulous dinner out of this fish um, in about a couple of minutes. Here's our second fish. Now this one came on the green uh, shad spread, niner shad, uh, niner spread. Um, all the keepers that we kept were about 32 inches, good eaters. Uh, a lot of the fish were all overs, mostly were overs. We had about 10 fish that day. Again, it's November 19th, 2021. And we're gonna have uh, Chef Michael Smith show you how to cook this fabulous catch. I'm Chef Michael Smith, and this is our first cooking session in our inaugural show. As you know, Captain Dan and JJ put us on some really nice stripers during the mid-November full moon. Perfect eaters. So we're going to prepare a very, very simple dish today of steamed stripers with mussels, clams, and shrimp. Now, a striper is a funny fish because I only, only know one way to cook it where it's actually palatable. And that is with a moist cooking process, either steamed or poached. Any other way, in my opinion, it gets spongy and you might as well just cook the kitchen sponge. If you fry it, it gets spongy. If you saute it, it gets spongy. But the moist heat seems to keep it nice and beautiful. So this simple dish will really help keep that beautiful texture of that beautiful white fleshed fish and make an incredible dish for your table. So the first thing we want to do is get some clams and mussels. Now these are little neck clams and mussels from the Barnegat Bay and we're just going to put them in a shallow pan and kind of arrange them around. And again, we're just going to arrange those around a little bit. Now this is key. Always use shell on shrimp for something like this. And the reason is there's a lot of flavor in the shell, believe it or not. So we'll just arrange a few of these beautiful shrimp. We're probably going to go three shrimp per portion, maybe five clams or six clams and mussels per portion. And just spread them on the top, okay? Then we're just going to nestle our beautiful pre-portioned striper fillets on top of this, just evenly around. And this is going to act like a perfect, almost like a little bamboo steamer of all things. So we're just going to push that down. 
And then we want to take some garlic and put some garlic for some flavoring. Now let me teach you how to do that. So all we want to do here is take some garlic cloves and literally smash it, smash it, and then take the husk off the garlic clove. And all that does is release the essential oils in the garlic so that when it steeps and steams, gets all that good garlic flavor in the broth. And just sprinkle that garlic around the top and that'll steam right along with the beautiful seafood and infuse those, that beautiful garlic flavor into the broth. Now, I know I'm going to get some comments, but that's a lot of garlic. And that's okay. Most Italian chefs will tell you that's too much garlic, but I happen to be a garlicaholic, and I think more garlic the better. So, it's all up to your personal taste. Then we're going to take some chopped Italian parsley, put that on top, and then just a little bit of white wine. You don't need a lot of liquid to get this started because the clams and the mussels will purge beautiful liquor. You don't even need salt and pepper because it's going to be flavored by the broth or the liquor from the clams and mussels. So just a little bit of white wine on top and a pretty heart healthy dish. No butter, no oil. We'll put this on high heat. Let it start to boil. Once it boils, cut it back to a simmer. This will probably take five to eight minutes. Now in the meantime, we're going to prepare a couple of garnishes. One is some frizzled leeks. Really simple to do. All we need to do is julienne some leeks, wet them a little bit in a bowl, put a little bit of seasoned salt, pepper, flour, and then pan shallow fry them until they're crisp. And we'll use that as a beautiful garnish. So you can see it's been about seven minutes. The clams and mussels are perfectly steamed open and that beautiful straight bass is fresh, fully cooked, and gorgeous. So the first thing we want to do is strain off some of the broth. The way I do that is I take a fine strainer and a little piece of cheesecloth and I dump that in there through the cheesecloth. And what that does is filter all the sand or grit that might have been purged from the shellfish out because there's nothing more unpleasant than getting that in your mouth. So the next thing you want to do is kind of spread your shrimp. Again, we're going to go probably three or four per portion. Depends how big a, uh, an appetite the family has. Some of the clams, beautiful Arnicut Bay Little Necks. And a little couple of the mussels. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of sauteed spinach in the center of this. For this, we're just going to make it a carnivore's meal. I'm going to get some of that beautiful garlic pieces in there, all right? And then we'll just gingerly take a beautiful piece of that awesome striper. Take some of our hot broth, kind of drizzle it all over the seafood so that it kind of reheats a little bit, although it's pretty hot now. Now you could add a little bit of butter, but then uh, you know, you're going to add some fat and calories that, in my opinion, with this dish are not necessary. I'm just going to take a pinch of Maldone sea salt and sprinkle it, some fresh cracked black pepper. And then take just kind of a mound of this, these frizzled leeks that we made and pop it on top as a garnish. So there you have it. Fresh striped bass with Barnegat Bay mussels, clams, and shell on shrimp steeped with garlic and a little bit of white wine. It couldn't be simpler and it's perfect for your table.